Dev got Tyrone Hill over there in his video hanging on his shoulder. <laughs> What's up, everybody out there? Welcome to another edition of Field Vision. Of course, brought to you by War Room Sports and Sports Kings. I'm one of your hosts, Devin. This is my homie, Ichabod. And tonight we got with us B. Austin, War Room Sports. Top of the morning to ye. <laughs> we got the homie Frank from Sports Kings. I'm pretty upset Jim didn't make it. I was looking forward to the uh, Steelers Super Bowl run speech. <laughs> we got Jimmy, War Room Sports. Yo, peace to all the gods and earths. And we got Justin representing Sports Kings. Yep, I'm here with my kids. <laughs> all right, so we're we going to jump right into it. This uh, this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about contenders and pretenders. Now, we're not going to go down the whole league. I mean, there's certain teams out there that we already know for sure are contenders and pretenders, but... We're going to uh, talk about a few teams that might be on everybody's brink. So we're going to see what you guys on the panel think. So the first team we're going to talk about, uh, they got a big game coming up this week against the Denver Broncos. Let's talk about the Indianapolis Colts for a minute. B. Austin, what are your thoughts on the Colts, contender or pretender? Uh, pretender in the long run, uh, definitely contender to win this game, as both teams are. <laughs> All right, Frank? I definitely would call them a contender. If you look at their schedule so far, a lot of tough teams already played the Niners and the Seahawks, and then they got the Broncos coming up this week, and they're still respectable, above 500. Uh, I definitely think they're going to be a contender once it's all set and done because I think they're going to get a very high seed as their schedule lightens up a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in that boat because uh, before the season started, I didn't really believe that much in Indianapolis. I thought last year may have been a little bit of an aberration, but... Um, like you said, the you know a really tough part of their schedule has already gone past, and you know they came out of that with two losses, and one of the losses unfortunately was to a team that they probably shouldn't have lost to in San Diego. So I'm I'm really on the borderline on this team. I kind of root for the Colts, so I want them to be contenders. And looking at how the rest of the league is shape shaking out at this point and shaping up, I'll probably go ahead and give them a, a small contender nod. Um, but I'm, I'm just not sure how much I believe in that. Jimmy, what do you think about the Colts? Yo, this this question itself is interesting because, um, in my opinion, there's probably like four teams who are clear contenders and the entire right. rest of the league is a bunch of pretenders. But with that being said, um, I would have to call the Colts contenders because, uh, as Frank said, their schedule, and they can play with anybody. I mean, they still make mistakes like young teams do, but they can play with anybody. Okay. Justin? I've got them as contenders. Um, you look at what their schedule has. Like Frank said, they beat San, or they beat San Francisco in San Francisco. Uh, then they played the Seahawks. The Seahawks anywhere are a tough team. And in between them and the Broncos were the Chargers. Anybody looked at that and could have called it a trap game. Um, to me, I think they're contenders. I don't want to piss off Jimmy, but I do. I'm, I'm going to pick them to beat the Broncos this week. All right, but let, let's cut that, cut that let's, out. Let's let's talk about um that team that we care about. Let's talk Jimmy, about Jimmy let's talk about the Chargers a little bit, uh, because this team to me is kind of you know Jekyll and Hyde. Like I think this is also a team like Jimmy said that can play with anybody, but they're hard to believe in because they're so inconsistent. So Justin, uh, what do you think about the Chargers, contenders or pretenders? I think they're pretenders. Always have been. Always will be. Damn. <laughs> right from a Raider the, fan. Shout the North Turner. Go ahead, Jim. Yo, I think they need more people. Simple as that. Yeah. All right, Frank. Uh, this this one's tough for me. I actually I made this list up of the contenders or pretenders, and this was the team that I kind of was. You know, one side I was like, all right, they're contenders. Then I was like, ah, oh, they're pretenders. The North Turner. I just can't sneak the North Turner thing. I think North Turner's like. Shot their confidence so bad that even gone, he's still like, his curse is still on that team. So I'm going to go Pretender. All right, yeah, this one, it, it's a little bit tough for me as well, because especially, you know, the guys from War Room Sports know, for some reason I've always had this faith in the Chargers. Um, we don't know why. Phillip Rivers is, is Rivers. back to playing at a pretty high level so far this season. But I don't think I'm ready to call the Chargers uh, contenders yet because, like Jimmy said, 
literally they do need more people. I mean, they, they're lacking weapons, you know, if you compare the teams to the Charger teams who were having great uh, regular seasons and then going out early in the playoffs, they are lacking some weapons. So, you know, that, t- that team still needs a little bit uh, more building. Uh, B. Austin? I place their fate squarely on the shoulders of one Danny Woodhead. And with that being said, they're all right. They're not real. <laughs> their division uh, sucks, too. It, you know, they play in the division both the Chiefs and the Broncos are 6-0, so they're going to have to grab that last playoff spot, it looks like. They're all right, but they're not real. Yeah, and it, it's going to be hard to be a contender, especially if you're going to be third in a division, you know, trying to get three teams into the playoffs. That's going to be pretty difficult. Um, let's playoffs. talk a little bit about the Cincinnati Bengals. B. Austin, where do you stand on the Bengals, contenders or pretenders? I like the Bengals. Like, I, I like Andy Dalton. I like what Giovanni Bernard is bringing to the table as a rookie already. Uh, A.J. Green is the route runner of all route runners with the hands to match. And after I say all of that, with a great defensive line in front seven, I still feel as though they're a pretender for the same reason that the, the Chargers are a pretender because of the curse of North Turner. They're cursed with a head coach that's already still there. Marvin Lewis is okay, but he's not a guy that's going to win a Super Bowl. He's just not. So, pretenders, long run. Look, they are a very talented team, very good defense. And different talent. But they are the Cincinnati Bungles until they prove otherwise. I'm going to go with pretenders. Frank? I like to root for anybody named the Red Rifle. I think that's the greatest nickname in the NFL. But that being said, I got to go pretenders. They're just way too inconsistent. They seem like one of those teams where they can beat anybody and they'll lose to anybody in the same token. Like, they'll go out and beat the Patriots and lose to the Jets. They're going to be the team. Do they play the Jaguars this season? They're going to be the team yeah, that loses to the, lose the Jaguars. The Jaguars. <laughs> That's going to be they, that. They'd be the one. This is yeah. the curse of Cincinnati. Cincinnati as a city just never I think it's just Ohio. God hates Cleveland, and, like, he just throws Cincinnati right in there with him. I used to get it in Ohio, though. Ichabod. I know you take no money in Akron. Ichabod finds that funny. He laughs at everything, but, you know. Jimmy, what do you think? <laughs> Yo, um, Frank is right. The team is very inconsistent, and I will not fall for the hype um, with the reality show because a lot of people fell in love with this team because of hard knocks, but at the end of the day, they're pretender show. Their, their defense is tough, though. Their hard knocks can do that hard. to you. Hard I knocks. picked him to go to the AFC Championship game, but I, I just unimpressed so far. Yeah, hard, hard knocks, twenty four seven. Those yo, they can make you root for Stalin, man. Like it's just amazing. <laughs> what you can do. I, be, I became a um a Ryan Tannehill fan last season because Miami was on hard knocks. See, that's uh, what I mean. So the hype is over with, though. I think I, they're. But I, I think Nick Foles is better than him, though. No, why you do that for? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Justin, Cincinnati contenders, pretenders. I am on the fence on this one. It's hard to call them contenders, um, but it's hard to call them pretenders. Like B. Austin said, that defense is for real. Uh, The biggest thing for me is Andy Dalton. Yes, he's a good quarterback, but three years in, and he has not had those signature moments. Uh, I mean, we we saw what Mike Lennon did with Vincent Jackson. Um, Who would Andy Dalton be without A.J. Green? That's that's why I'm on the fence, because he has not been the guy. You trying to see yeah. that one shining moment? I think I think yeah. Red is I think Red is still kind of a game manager with a little bit. You know, he has talent, but I, I think he, he's still kind of a game manager. That's just me though. All right, so let's move on to Big Red's team, the Kansas City Chiefs. Justin, another team in your division. I think they're for real. Um, last year they had six Pro Bowlers. They were a two and fourteen team. They got that offensive line in shape. Uh, the defense is firing all, on all cylinders. Uh, I, I Even last year, 2-14, and 14, I, I thought they had the best linebacking core in the game. I still think that secondary is much improved. Defensive line is just getting after it. I, mean, I think these guys are for real. Jimmy. <clears throat> yeah, I still find it amazing that a 2-14 and 14 team had that many pro bowlers, but the team had talent. <laughs> they were just disor- – I mean, they were, they were unorganized. I mean – it was to the point that people start murking themselves in the parking lot. I mean, they had all kinds of issues, <laughs> and they just yeah. needed some direction. And then comes, you know, Andy Reid. Andy Reid doing what he's doing. I think they are contenders now. At the end of the day, they're in my team's division, and they will lose. But they're going in the right direction. Now. <laughs> Frank, 
I like to say they're contenders only based on the fact I think they're going to get a really high seed because their their schedule is just cake. I mean, mm-hmm. so far it's been cake, and it doesn't even – I mean, they got the two games against the Broncos still, obviously, but aside keep, from keep, that, keep. oh, man, it's so good. Do you good. see where they play the Broncos? They play the Broncos like at the end of the season twice in like three weeks. Like, who set mm-hmm. that up? Yeah, I, I never know how they make these schedules, but anyways. I, I, think, I mean, for, yo, Frank, think about this. Their first like five games was in uh, – play. Andy Reid played his old division, which he, you know, he already knows the teams, and right. then they don't play the Broncos to the very end of the season. Like, who did that? Yeah, I mean, they still have they have Houston this week, which is a lot easier game than we thought it was going to be because Matt Schaub's either going to be injured or throwing it to the other team. And then, I mean, they got <laughs> Cleveland, Buffalo. I mean, they still have Washington and another game against the Raiders. I mean, they're going to finish at least 12-4. and four. Well, let me just say that Washington is a win. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, like, I agree with you guys. Like, 2-14 and 14 last year, they were – Basically, way too talented of a team to finish two and fourteen, but they did um, what they needed. They got, you know, they got some structure, like Jimmy said, and and the coaching staff now. Coaching the um, Andy Reid is still a good coach, just needed a change of scenery. You know, his time was done in Philly, um, and it's time for him to start over. And his start over isn't like most people when they have to start over. Uh, I mean, if you look at Kansas City's record, you would think so, but he went to a team that has so much talent, I think he could just step in and do his thing, and that's what he's done. Um, as far as the schedule, Jimmy, I think you know it's one of those things. They do get to play Denver twice later in the season, and now they're benefiting from a, a last-place schedule. But as Frank said, they may go about 12-4, and four, and, you know, once you get into the playoffs, anything can happen. So I'm going to basically go contender with the Yo, Chiefs. Well. They may have been the best 2-14 and 14 team ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to go contender. Uh, be awesome. Um, I just want to take the time to shout out Andy Reid, man. You, you, you've given us a lot of good memories, man. I hate you for sticking with the quarterback that you stuck with for so long, um, and I hate you for throwing that little red flag out on the field uh, when you didn't know what the hell you were doing. But all, <laughs> all in all, you are a great game strategist, and, and you deserve the success that hopefully will come to you in Kansas City. With that said, you got a running back with two first names and a skinny neck. Um, and the same thing that got you in Philly is going to get you with the Kansas City Chiefs because you have a quarterback who is really a game manager. So when it comes down to in this NFL where you got to score points and throw the ball, I think Alex Smith has been more exposed as for what he really is in Kansas City than he was as a Niner. I just don't think I I don't think they can put up enough points. In, in a in a real situation, I think Wait, they're a successful team. Well, I think I think Andy Reid just called the timeout. I <laughs> <laughs> think about whispering <laughs> in my ear, like tell dude to shut up. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'm, I'm, he said it, not I'm, me. Man. Yeah, I'm not Ichabod's. I crush his head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. man. Two more teams. Let's talk real quick about the Lions. Uh, B. Austin, Detroit. Definitely a pretender. Um, pretender. Yeah, definitely a pretender. All right, well, you know, they're leading that division right now. I mean, the way Green Bay has jumped out of the gate, I guess it's it's not surprising that either the Lions or Chicago uh, will be in the mix right now. Um, Detroit is another team, you know, no matter how much talent they get from me, before I believe that they're a contender in any season, they're going to have to prove something to me, you know, in the prior season. So I just can't believe in Detroit. I think at some point they'll fall off. Uh, But I do think they're going in the right direction. But we've been saying that for five years now. Um, I'm going to go pretender. Frank. I agree with you. It's one of those things where if they go out and they win a playoff game this year, then next year I'll be prepared to call them a contender. But this Mm -hmm. year, I still got pretender. Mm Mm-hmm. Jim. Yo, for me, they're Detroit, and it's just difficult for me to say anything great about a Detroit football team. Shout out to Scott Mitchell and Herman Moore, but these guys are pretenders. Yo, they're Detroit. They're bankrupt. Three hundred million. Yo, they get not that's, why, that's why they need this team to be a contender, though. It looks like the Tigers. Yo, shout out to my Choke up their man. lunch. Shout yo, out to and that's another Kwame. thing. Yeah, before Jessica, yo, free Kwame Kilpatrick. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> yo, PJ say they yo, roof that dude. free Kwame, yo, free Kwame. <laughs> Some of y'all say free little Boosie. We say free Kwame. Yo, free Kwame, Kwame got roofed. <laughs> yeah, right, they Justin. gave him. They gave him <laughs> defensive line numbers. Yo, they gave him the long haul, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go close to the gun line. I'll go quick on this one. You guys pretty much covered it. I do think they're pretenders as well. That's what she said. All right, Cowboys, <laughs> Justin, contenders or pretenders? This one's tough. Um, I I don't know. Right now, I'm going to say pretenders. <laughs> <laughs> no more. Uh, they've done good things that I didn't think they could do, um, but they've also choked in good big moments. So yeah, Jimmy. Yo, they play in the NFC ass, which means they'll have a great um, opportunity to make the playoffs. But overall, this team is, is – I still have to call them pretenders, yo. Right. I'm going to hit this with the Greg Popovich patented one-word answer. Pretenders. <laughs> All right, me, I think – I actually think this game this week against Philadelphia might put Dallas on whichever, whichever path they're going to go on. I don't think my Eagles are that good. Um, like Jimmy said, they play in the NFC ass, so a playoff berth is probably a given for the Dallas Cowboys. I think they get in and, and maybe surprise a team or two. I'm, I'm going to go slight contender Ooh, on the said, Cowboys by virtue of the division that they play in. You said Just a team like or said, two. A team or two. Uh, who knows? <laughs> two. Team or two. Damn, two, 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 two. Maybe the NFC championship game. game. <laughs> so that will make them a contender until they lose that game. <laughs> They're, they're going to surprise a few teams and be a pretender yeah. in the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, team, team or two, and then I don't see them winning the whole thing, but and and I would hate to see that. But yeah, a, a slight contender, like I said, by virtue of the division only. You know, they're going to get in. So what are you going to do when you get there? Be awesome. Yeah. I hate Dallas Cowboys. I hate them. What's um, going or score, and this is what I feel about the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> you, you give them Eli uh, face? Uh, I give come them on, Eli uh, face. So, yeah, they're, they're a pretender. They're, they're the best team in the NFC East, but that ain't hard to beat, but still. Yeah, it really is. not me. And a lot of injuries. A lot of injuries. All right. So we're talking about the NFC East. We mentioned the game with Dallas and – B. Austin and my beloved Philadelphia Eagles coming up this Sunday. Uh, Philadelphia has a little bit of a quarterback controversy. I mean, they've had it since the offseason when Chip Kelly said it was an open competition. Um, by virtue of the last game and a half where Nick Foles was the quarterback of record, uh, who do you guys think uh, should should be the Eagles quarterback from, from this point on for the rest of the season, even if Mike Vick is healthy? Do you guys think he should get the job back, or do you think Foles has done enough to prove that he can run the offense a little bit better? I, I say Mike Vick. Cunningham. Go ahead, go Frank. You say Frank. I think Mike Vick gives them the best chance to win, but I think Nick Foles is probably the best thing for their future because I don't think they're, you know, if we're going on pretender or contender, I don't think they're contenders this year. So even though Mike Vick gives them the best chance to win, I would probably go with Foles. I've heard, I've heard a couple people, Will Bond and uh, Michael Smith, actually say they should go with both, have a dual quarterback. Yeah, I did hear, I did hear uh, yeah, Will Bond yeah, say that. Bullshit. I don't, I don't really respect anything Will Bond says ever. But, um, Damn! <laughs> Shots He's a cool dude. dude. He's a cool so, dude. I, say, I just I, don't I think just he wanna, ever knows what he's talking about. So. Yeah, I just want to say this. Um, I actually... Um, I'm not sure even if Vic gives them the best chance to win now, Frank, to be honest with you. But I definitely think they should go with Foles because at the end of the day, you know what you have with Mike Vic. You know how far the team can go. Let, just move on to the future. I mean, unless you really want to win the NFC ass and, you know, get in the playoffs, shot to win one or two games like, you know, Dev says. But <laughs> no, I, say go with Nick I, th I say go with Nick Foles and just see what you have and build towards the future because this is a rebuilding team where it's supposed to be, but the whole division is ass. But – See, but just Jimmy, go with Nick Foles. That's what I I'm thought not they should have done. I don't think either one of them are good. Yeah, I don't I, think I, either I, one of them are good. I thought they should have done that from the start. And like I don't I don't think Nick Foles has proven um, you know, with his limited Anything. playing league, I don't think he's proven that he's not good. So I think I think they should have done that from the beginning of the season, but 
you know, they have this thing, they think because they had a new coaching regime come in that they actually had a chance to do something to make some noise. And just like we talked about the Dallas Cowboys, because of this division, that could possibly be true. But at the same time, you know, I, I didn't know, I didn't really understand why they re-signed Mike Vick in the first place. Not that he hasn't been playing good, but I think Nick Foles actually has a better control over this offense so far. Now, he could get the job, play a few games, and his numbers could come back down to earth. But at the same time, the only difference I see from these two quarterbacks when they're running the offense is that the team looks a little faster with Mike Vick. But I'd rather have more success than more speed. So that really yeah. doesn't matter to me. We should mention that his success has been against probably the two worst teams in the league. Um, well, let's, let's mention that Mike Vick's success this season was against the Redskins. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So basically, you know, besides us getting assaulted by Denver, well, the AFC uh, West, basically, you know, we really haven't played anybody in the NFC. So all three teams that we've played and beaten in the NFC, they they really weren't a test for either of the quarterbacks. So, right. no, I, actually, Tampa Bay has a pretty good defense, though. I'm not going to just slight Nick Foles like that. The team sucks, I am. but the defense is pretty good. <laughs> the Giants, on the other hand, I don't know what the hell you guys are doing. Personnel. The personnel for Tampa Bay is good. Their players are good. The system blows. Yeah, because they're still running zone coverages after you pick up Revis. That's like, the, like what the Eagles did with Namdi. But, uh, yeah. B. Austin, what do you think? Um, Jimmy and I are in complete agreement. Uh, this only happens probably once a year. This is true. Why, <laughs> why, why go with Michael Vick if you're rebuilding and he's 33 years old, 34, facing 34, and you're not going to win a Super Bowl with Mike Vick. So you've got a guy that you've drafted, give him the keys to the offense. Give Jim him Kelly keys didn't to the draft him, though. Well, yeah. So he probably but, don't give a hell about that. Yeah, but but but, but he, he sees the youth. The youth is there. Build with the youth. <laughs> the two youths. <laughs> the two youths. There. Did you say youths? <laughs> yeah, the two youths. <laughs> Build, build with them, and um, build with them, and 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 send Vic to pasture because. Damn. Yeah, yeah I, I I just think I, I mean I, I respect Michael Vic and and what there he brings to the table and and his willingness to go out and get body every every week after holding on to the ball for ten and twelve and fifteen seconds and the excitement that he brings uh, certain segments of the audience that watch. Eagles games, but we're, we're not winning with you. Go with the white guy, man. <laughs> no, but, but go with the white guy. With Vic, you also know what you're not going to get, and that's a full season. So, Intelligence, you know, the ability to read. Yeah, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking yeah, about a full season. Go. Anticipatory <laughs> throws. So you're saying throw him out there and let him get hurt again? I respect <laughs> Michael Vic for being a convicted felon and still making $50 million. I know about that. I That's hope I don't ever have dream. to try that, but I, I hope it, you know, kill it comes to that. <laughs> Listen, one last point for me, because I'm not one of those numbers never lie guys, because actually numbers tell a whole lot of lies um, on different lie occasions. Lie. But, uh, you know, you can use numbers to supplement your argument. But for those people who think numbers never lie, like Nick Foles is kind of blowing Mike Vick out of the water right now. Out of the water. In limited action. Like, and I got those numbers. Third downs. Mean. His percentage on no. third downs are is, is way higher. Uh, his percentage in the red zone, way higher. He has more touchdown throws than Mike Vick, less interceptions, and, and a lot he less has time. six touchdowns and zero interceptions, to be exact. And okay. Mike Vick if has you have five him, give them to us real quick so we can do our picks and get out of here. Yo, Foles has six touchdowns, zero interceptions. Vick has five TDs and two interceptions. Nick Foles has a 127 passer rating. Mike Vick has a 90 passer rating. Mike Vick is completing 53% of his passes. Nick Foles is completing 69. Okay. Mike and Foles Nick has Foles, 500 and some yards. Vick has 1,100. Probably. Nick Foles also, like I said, his percentage is higher. Mike Vick, he's not turning the ball over like last season, but drives are stalling in the red zone where they're not really doing that so far with Nick Foles. Like I said, I'm not just like a true believer, like this trend might continue because he could easily get in there full time and fall back down to earth. Um, he also has four touchdowns in the fourth quarter this season where Mike Vick has none, so that's kind of help 
the Eagles win those last two games. Uh, so it is what it is. We'll see where they go when Vic is 100% healthy. I think they might try to sneak Foles out there this week because it, there really is no use putting Vic back in the game if they're going to do that until he's 100%. Because if he's sure a, there is, let him pull it harder and put him on IR, then they have no excuse. <laughs> then, pull Sanchez. Sanchez. And and that might be Matt Barkley time after uh after Foles. Let's get go, Barkley. Word. Matt Barkley, let's bring back the West Coast and get it cracking. Yo, Matt right, Barkley might be the best quarterback on that team. I think Barkley's better than both of them. I, I think concur. Charles Barkley's better than both I of think, them. I think I uh, think <laughs> I think Frank is slighting Foles a little bit. He, he yeah, hasn't gotten a Foles chance guy. to prove that he's a bum. Hello. He's two and six. <laughs> two and six as a starter. That's right. I mean that's not good. The Eagles aren't good. You can't blame that on him. <laughs> hey, yo, uh, Maybe, chill, yo. Who has a better record with that team over the last stretch of games? They suck. I mean, I'm, I'm saying he's better than Michael Vick, but that's not really saying much. Yeah, I mean, they were a four-win team last year, so, you know. Would you say that he's the, better the, than Eli? If we're talking about <laughs> rebuilding, like us uh, realistic Eagles fans think, you know, what's going on right now, then you really can't compare – your quarterback competition by wins because we're not getting wins. So I'm going to end it on this. The, right. the better quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles is somebody that gives LaShawn McCoy the ball 35 times in a game. Whoever does that, that guy should be the starter. He got it 25 times last last game against the Bucks. I was yeah. at that game, as a matter of fact. Bucks, uh, you guys need a new stadium. And you'll need some fans. Yeah. It seemed like a Philadelphia home game down there. All right, so let's, let's get our picks in real quick. Um, of course... Uh, the picks we have in common, everybody picks Seattle over Arizona, Atlanta over Tampa Bay, San Diego over Jacksonville, Green Bay over Cleveland, Miami over Buffalo, and uh, New England over the New York Jets. So the teams we're going to talk about real quick, Cincinnati versus Detroit, two of the teams we just did in Contender Pretender. B. Austin, who you got? Uh, Cincinnati versus who? Detroit. Cincinnati. You forgot who you picked. <laughs> I I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Detroit on this one. Um, they're playing at home. I'm not sure how much of a home field advantage the whole city of Detroit is, but I'm going to go with Detroit on this it's one. It's bankrupt. Frank. Free Kwame. They got a nice stadium, though. Nice stadium. I, I got the Lions, too. I just I can't, I don't, I can't. I'm not buying the Bengals. I just, it seems like one of the games are going to go out and just dud. Ooh, Jimmy. <laughs> But that means you're buying the Lions, so I'm going to uh, pick the Bengals. <laughs> Just it depends if Megatron plays too. Megatron, obviously, huge factor. Megatron will play, and I'm, I'm going to take the Lions. All right. Um, Dallas versus my Philadelphia Eagles. Justin, where are you going with this one? Cowboys. How Thank about you. them cowgirls, Jimmy? Yo, I'm going with Nick Foles and the Eagles. <laughs> going with Nick. Quick, Nick, trick, Frank. <laughs> the one, the only, Nick Foles, man. All right. <laughs> um, hate having to do this, get hated for this type of stuff week after week. I'm going to have to go with Dallas on this. I'm not really sure. Damn, if, the Cowboys come I'm not really sure if it turns into a shootout and a must score on every possession or every other possession type game like they have with Denver. I'm not sure we can keep up with that. Yeah, you two uh, objective. Be awesome. I'm not. Am I able? Am I able to abstain? Nope. Dallas. Damn. Thank you. Yo, us. without Demarcus yeah, Ware, the, without Demarcus Ware, the, the the Cowboys pass rush is going to be miserable. You know, Frank, well, they put up 48 points. We can't do that. <laughs> Actually, we thought that last week, and you know they had a bunch of no-name guys. The the pass rush still looked. I mean, but you know, I, that, I'm, was, that was that no, was that was that was the cornball. The right. to the ball. I'm one of the I'm one of the first people to admit, like when people come in off the bench, even a quarterback, they tend to look good. We'll see what that pass rush looks like after you know a week of practice. Uh, you know, offensive line getting some film well, on those well, guys. Also, also they their played the Washington football team. The yeah. yeah, they I played the Washington football team. I'm not going to call them <laughs> the other name, but they played the Washington yeah. football team. So. I do think the Eagles have a great chance of winning this game because of the guys that are out, DeMarco Murray and um and where. But uh prove me wrong. I've always, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for it. So uh, let's go with uh the last game of the week. 
big game. Peyton Manning going back to Indianapolis. They're going to have a ceremony before the game for him. Ursay uh, took a little shot at, at Peyton Manning. Um, B. Austin, who you got, Denver Peyton or Indianapolis? Peyton Manning. All right. Um, I think I'm going to go with Denver as well. I already had Denver winning the game. I think this whole controversy with with Ursay and and the media kind of blowing it up to more than what it really was. I think it might even give Peyton Manning a little bit more laser focus. The guys are going to want to win it for him, and they're already undefeated, so they're going to want to win it anyway. So I'm going to take the Broncos, Frank. Jim Ursay is like very Mark Cubanish, where he makes me not want to root for his team just because I don't like him. That being said, hate to say it, Jimmy. Denver's oh. looking shaky, baby. <laughs> Love it. Listen, Indianapolis. I'm a, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it a thousand. I was actually going to pick Indianapolis in this game, but then until they, they lost to San Diego. No, two <laughs> words came to mind, yo. Von Miller. That's oh, Von we Miller. Seven. Von, You're right. Von Miller. Von no, Miller that's, comes that's, back. That's it, that's my, yo. That's my fantasy defense. Andrew Von Luck Miller ain't going to do ish in that game. Yo, Andrew, Andrew Luck is my Luck, favorite Andrew quarterback Luck in the league. might not make it out this game. Yo, Von Miller's back, and he's, he's angry. He's my favorite quarterback in the league. Right now. So I need him to get some sacks, but don't hurt Andrew Luck. I don't yo, want just, a side, just a side note, yo. Like, yo, honoring him while he's still playing, yo, that's, that's, that's sucker stuff. Yeah, that's sucker move. <laughs> that's sucker but they move. said maybe it's a move to butter him up, get him a little softened before the game. Yeah, that, that's, 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 that's Peyton, Peyton got a little that's that Mike, Mike Kobe in him, though. He liked to step on your neck, so. Yeah, he yeah, that's does. Very Drake, yo, that's very Drake. Yo, yo Von yes. Miller needs to not hang out with Alden Smith, though. We need to, like, yeah, make sure those they two gotta get never out. Yo, cross paths. Frank, Frank, did you know they all? have a gang? They have a gang. It's called the Smith. It's called the Smith Miller. Uh, it's the Smith Miller set. <laughs> I think they got a gang called J.J. Watt for Defensive Player of the Year. Mm. Yeah. They might do it on them. Justin, who anyway, you got? Denver or Indy? That's it. Von Miller's back, baby. Smith Miller gang. Von Miller might be back, but it's going to be hard to, for him to focus with that bright orange, that bright pink, and that bright blue when he's on the mollies. I'm taking <laughs> Indianapolis over Denver? Yes, sir. He's just, right, so. he just a Raider hater. Don't take it <laughs> There you have it, people. Uh, this has been another episode of Field Vision, like we always tell you guys. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you comment on the video. Uh, anything you guys need to say, say it, and we can get a dialogue started. Um, I promise you guys, one of these days, I will get a haircut, and I will cut this hobo-looking beard off my face. Ladies, stay tuned. But um, <laughs> any last, any parting thoughts before we get out of here? No, no we're not is. blooding, we're not crooking, we Smith Miller gang, and who rides? <laughs> Yo, I just want to say, I'm not, cutting my, I'm not cutting my beard until the Broncos make it past the second round of the playoffs. That's it. Yo, I just well, want to say shout out. Okay, shout out to Ben Roethlisberger for MVP. Nice win <laughs> against the Jets. Well on their yeah. way. Yo, hey, shout you, out to Jim and you, Ben Roethlisberger, a.k.a. Don't Say Nothing, Just Give It Here. You can do that because <laughs> uh, your team is good. If I made any beer promises that had anything to do with the Eagles, I might have this for the rest of my life. So, Yo. Um, beer game. And it's starting to be a little hoboish because, you know, I haven't been to the barber. But anyway, everybody, Talk as we always tell boy. you, <laughs> don't accept mediocrity and be steadfast in the war against ignorance. We'll see you chumps on top. Smith Miller again. Kuwait is the war room with five nights at the round table, five Philly 